fourth time's a charm, or how to unravel our biodigital future selves. NFTs, crypto, and blockchain will look like yeoman farming compared to what's coming. Quote, Conclusion We could be on the cusp of a long-term biodigital transformation of our economy, society, institutions, and environment. This biodigital convergence could disrupt the way we produce and consume goods and services, relate to one another, maintain and augment our bodies, acquire and process data, make decisions, and manage our place in ecosystems. End quote. And that was taken from an article from the Government of Canada website titled Exploring Biodigital Convergence. Imagine being able to analyze your dreams upon waking using your Neuralink or getting hyper-personalized health data streamed from your AI doctor's data center in the cloud or monitoring your home security from your palm. Okay, those last two are almost here and that last one has arrived. All of those exist in some form today. Let's back it up. After the agricultural revolution and before the first industrial age, as armored knights were at the height of perfecting their art, gunpowder weapons shot onto the scene. Today, as constantly connected citizens are at the height of their content consumption, AI weapons have burst onto the scene. Right when we think we have it all figured out. Boom. Current Control of Our Inner Cosmos In this age, we constantly seem to be told we are on the cusp of something huge. But no one can predict when exactly that will happen. Here are some examples of what is happening right now, and what to expect from our future. Altering our genome. The world's first gene-edited babies. Machine learning using minimal data to make predictions to make it even easier to edit DNA. Altering and manipulating your thoughts. Improving your well-being and productivity at work using advanced software for managing business processes. Improving your brain's processing speed, reasoning, and memory with apps. Brain-machine interfaces. The Neuralink by Elon. Bionic limb control systems approved by the FDA. This is only a handful of what's happening right now in labs across the world. Who knows what else is being worked on in privately contracted secret access programs that we will never hear about. Also, they want to monitor our phones. Why wouldn't they monitor our bodies once we merge with tech? Terrifying. Fourth time's the charm. Things that come in threes are associated with good luck. Apparently, there is a similarity with the Holy Trinity of Christianity, according to the first page of Google. But there is a fourth revolution on the horizon. My mind cannot think past infotech, automation, and AI. But there is more to come. Quote, The first industrial revolution used water and steam power to mechanize production. The second used electric power to create mass production. The third used electronics and information technology to automate production. Now, a fourth industrial revolution is building on the third, the digital revolution that has been occurring since the middle of last century. It is characterized by a, fu a fusion of technologies that is blurring the lines between the physical, digital, and biological spheres. End quote. And that's from a article from the World Economic Forum website titled The Fourth Industrial Revolution what it means, how to respond. I wonder how biology will enjoy us tampering with it at this level of manipulation. We, as in the collective, couldn't see this pandemic coming. So how can we possibly predict and prepare for the, quote, blurring of the lines between the physical, digital, and biological spheres, end quote. You saw and experienced just how prepared our government and institutions were. How did they react? 
Band-Aids on broken bones as the scars were forming, was their response. Do I know how we should have responded? No. But I'd like to trust that entities with all the power uh, have our best interests in mind and know how to handle a situation like this. Boy, was I wrong. The fact that all countries around the world chose to deal with this in different ways reveals to us the dirty little secret that they don't tell you until you're old enough to handle it, if you're lucky enough to be told. And that is, no one really knows what's going on. And that's terrifying. Trust us. The featured article at the beginning is from the Canadian government's own website. They can predict, prepare, and fund research into the forthcoming Industrial Revolution, but can't predict or help prevent the spread of a virus. Shake my damn head. If one were conspiratorial and distrustful with their government, which is more and more people every day, one would think this is a terrible idea to be investing our time and money and resources into. Or at least, one would want to have transparency while this is all going down. Let's play a game. Rapid fire question round. Do you trust your government to fix simple infrastructure issues? Do you trust your institutions to have your best interest in mind? Do you trust your cultural leaders to be mentors to you and your children? I'll go first. To the first one, sort of. Eventually roads and buildings get fixed, but I sure do hate the traffic. To the second one, not so much anymore. In education, tuition was not reduced when you still had to go to school online. But what exactly were students paying for? To hand in assignments on time while almost no learning was done. And to the third question, not even sure what a cultural leader even looks like these days. Who do we have to look up to and to strive to be like? Athletes? Maybe Gable Stevenson, the Olympic gold medal winner in heavyweight wrestling. But the Olympics are trash anyways. This past six years have been a masterclass in personal sovereignty and freedom versus safety and security for all. I'm not asking you to take a side, but it's pretty obvious they, and by they you can insert any institution of power, is forcing you to take sides. Not taking a side is taking a side against the other sides, apparently. Quote, Twitter seems to be gangs of people trying to out-extreme one another. Attempting to be fair and balanced these days and trying to see both sides simply means you're hated by both sides for not totally agreeing with them. Even asking a question is seen as a threat. Scary. And that's a tweet from Ricky Gervais. Good luck, my modern yeoman farmer. The speed at which these technologies are coming has never been seen before in our short history on this planet. What do we do now? If this fourth industrial age is coming soon and we're going to merge with tech and our own governments are dedicating millions of dollars in researching biodigital convergence, how do we protect ourselves? We could say, screw it and go live in the woods in a castle surrounded by a moat. Quote, Society has its problems, and it's popular to want to go off the grid and run away from it all. I get it. But as a parent, I see little choice but to stay involved and fight for the future for my children. We can't run and hide forever. End quote. And that was a tweet from Mark Allen Bover. Doomer or revolution fighter? Stay and fight. But what does fighting even look like? I don't mean taking up arms like the yeoman farmers against the armored knights did. I don't believe we're there yet. Having skin in the game, becoming anti-fragile, solidifying and diversifying your talent stack, becoming a person that can't be canceled. These are the ways in which we can fight back and get the future we actually want for ourselves instead of the future that is forced upon us with no room for exceptions or compromise. If you made it this far, I know you're fascinated with our many possible future paths. Me too. This can be hard for one person to unpack, so I encourage you all to leave a comment 
and help me unravel this age that is upon us. Thanks for reading, and thanks for listening. Talk soon.